LTE is the next generation of wireless broadband technology that builds on the current 2G and 3G networks that most consumers are familiar with. With over 800 million mobile subscriptions in Africa, the wireless broadband market is set to take off. The first African LTE conference took place in Cape Town recently, so we explored the challenges around rolling out the fourth generation network to African subscribers. Right now, LTE is very topical. It's a lot faster, up to two to three times faster than current 3G, all things being equal. And it's more importantly, it's actually more stable and a lot quicker to connect and a lot quicker to use than the current 3G platforms. It also allows more connections at higher speed than the old 3G technology. So it's a very, very relevant technology for the coming age because everybody's usage of um, broadband is increasing exponentially as devices get better, as people download more YouTube videos, as their experience on the internet gets more and more rich with multimedia, with video, with all the other things that you sort of take for granted, but you tend to use more as the experience improves. So LTE is all about not just speed, but I think quality of experience. Many telecom operators on the continent have only recently begun rolling out their 3G services. A key question here is whether operators can afford the additional investment required to migrate to 4G LTE technologies. They've rolled out those networks and in many cases the demand has not yet quite materialized. Uh, the, the, phones, uh, the phones that can really take advantage of data networks are not quite there. So uh, as a result, these networks are not heavily utilized. They still need to be, the, the investment still needs to be recovered. And now we're asking them to, to invest in, addi in additional CapEx. And at the same time, uh, they have the threat of new entrants, people who don't have these issues about uh, 3G investments and, and historic networks, who can possibly come and snap up this, uh, the spectrum and compete uh, in a very difficult space and make life difficult for the existing operators. Radio frequency spectrum is used to carry electromagnetic signals to anything from your garage door remote to satellite television. Government regulators generate significant revenue through auctioning spectrum to operators, as it's key in determining the coverage and speed of the network. So the spectrum is of course absolutely key. When we talk about wireless technology, I would say the spectrum is just the amount of oxygen you have in order to feed your customer. Yeah? So uh, this, is, this is absolutely key. And what we're discussing with regulators all across the board is to try to find the best way to quickly allocate the spectrum which is necessary for this type of technologies. As the technology coexists in our networks, we have 2G, we have 3G, we are preparing for LTE. We need to have spectrum for all these elements. And uh, currently, lots of uh, the spectrum is still reserved for, I would say, uh, operators or agencies which are not using it. Delays in spectrum allocation on the continent came under the spotlight where analysts urged governments to speed up their efforts or risk hampering technological development. There are two key issues right now. One, South Africa is in the process of doing a spectrum audit and finding out who needs what and how to allocate that spectrum to the right people. There's a big debate about giving it to the incumbents like Vodacom and MTN and those guys who can use it immediately or making it available to smaller players um, who would then perhaps enable a lot of other companies to get involved in the market. The, the big challenge in telecommunications, it's a scale business. There's not big margins and, and those margins are dropping and broadband prices are coming down, not going up. There is ongoing debate on whether African markets are ready to adopt LTE as it is more expensive than 3G, which is still in the process of being rolled out across the continent. The market readiness is that in order to roll out LTE, or the next generation in, uh, in mobile broadband, we need to have, uh, I would say, three or four elements, yes? Uh, we need to have technology okay, in place. We need to have uh, an ecosystem of handsets which are suitable. Okay? We need to have the spectrum for that and we need to have a business model. Okay? Now, if we, take, about, if we took, take a look at the consumers, of course, this is just more data. And the tendency is, of course, you want to have more data at the same price. Uh, people are not really willing to uplift that. So we need to find the right business model, the right approach, and deliver that improved quality of experience at the right price point. However, there are analysts who believe that certain African markets are ready to adopt the technology. Yes, I think the, dark, the market is very definitely ready. Um, LTE is going to happen. We've already got um, three active, four active LTE networks in South Africa. Um, yes, with limited geographic coverage, but consumers are ready to start adopting it.
because of the need for faster connectivity, more reliable connectivity, and most importantly on the LTE front is the incredibly low latency that the network offers, um, which is probably in the region of a fifth to a tenth of the latency that one can expect on a 3G network. While there is still debate over whether African markets can afford to adopt LTE technology, the service is being rolled out across South Africa's major markets. With key African markets having over 100% mobile penetration rates, it is certain that mobile operators will be looking to LTE as a means to outperform competitors.